Hello and welcome. You're watching To The Point. On the last day of campaigning before the third round of voting in Kashmir, tonight's episode is devoted to two specific aspects of what's happening in that critical state. In part two, we shall discuss Prime Minister Modi's first rally in Sirinagar and his message to the valley. Was it new and different? Did he reach out to Kashmiri Muslims or did he fail to live up to Atul Bihari Vajpayee's message which he has often said he wants to emulate? That's the discussion in part two. But first, we turn to Friday's deeply worrying terror attack on the army camp in Uri. This is the first time a regular army camp 14 miles from the border has been attacked, leaving a total of eight soldiers and officers dead. What does this tell us about the state of security and alert at the camp? And are there grounds for saying the army has relaxed its vigil or deflected its attention? That's the big first debate tonight. And joining me now to discuss Friday's terror attack in Uri are two former commanders of 15th Corps, Lieutenant General J.S. Dhillon joining us from Chandigarh and Lieutenant General Saeed Atta Hasnain joining us from Allahabad. Also with me, the former Army Commander of Northern Command, Lieutenant General B.S. Jaswal and the Strategic Affairs Editor of the Business Standard, Colonel Ajay Shukla. General Dhillon, on Friday, for the first time ever, Terrorists from Pakistan entered a regular army camp at Uri in the valley, some 14 miles from the border, killing a total of eight soldiers and officers. What does this tell us about the state of security and alert at the Uri camp? General Your voice is breaking. Your voice is breaking, but I have understood what you are asking. Uh, can you hear me? I can, yes, go ahead. Uh, it's an unfortunate incident and it needs to be corrected. What has to be understood, 15 Court has always been fully involved at the LOC, counter-infiltration, insurgency in the valley, and now they were involved in the floods and, uh, and the elections. So with all these events taking place, there has been, not a laxity, but I would say uh, something has, has definitely gone wrong. Because what I heard from the news media, another one, militants came through to Tumari Gale, which is the old known route. I remember during my time in 95, we killed 30, uh, 95, Can we I killed interrupt 39 you, General militants Dillon. in that area. General Dillon, I want you to explain what you mean when you say something has gone wrong. Are you saying this is a sign of negligence? Are you saying this is a sign that the army camp wasn't prepared? Are you saying this is a sign of some laxity? What are you making? You see, again your voice is, I can't hear you, but I'll tell you what my views are on the thing. There's no doubt there has been a lapse on our part. They have been able to infiltrate right through 14 kilometers, come to our area, go across the river, and get into an army camp, whether small or big, that same material. And then, no, that is not acceptable. Our main task is to defend LOC, our main task with that is our own security and we cannot divert our attention from that to any, any other task. Other tasks are secondary to me. So, just so there has been a lapse which needs to be looked into to be put right and if we try to cover it up and don't take action, maybe I hope we don't end up what happened in Kargil a few years ago. Are you saying, General Saab, that in fact the army's primary focus has been deflected away from security on the LOC to other concerns? Is that what you're saying? What I'm saying is, as I uh, narrated earlier, they are involved today in five... They are today involved in four to five very important tasks. And in that situation, the attention today is basically focused on elections in the valley. And with that focus, it affects right troops at the lowest level and it has affected our efficiency for that short duration but I'm sure our leadership is strong okay. enough to put it right. General Jaswal, you've been Northern Army Commander. You've just heard General Dillon, a former commander of 15th Corps, say that this was a lapse. He's also said that in fact the Army's attention has been deflected away from 
critical concerns about security on the LOC to holding peaceful elections. How much of that do you agree with? Uh, I do respect the views of General Dillon. Uh, good evening to you, sir. Uh, I would like to say one thing that uh, though he has said there is a certain amount of laxity, but when your personal life is involved, I don't think that sentry over there can afford to be lax. If you actually go through the operation, the way it was conducted, it was very well planned. They had wrecked the area. Of course, I do agree with General Dillon, they are infiltrated. That's a bad sign. Now, there was a person who was uh, acting as a stop to stop the reinforcements coming in, and he took the maximum toll. Uh, the toll was basically of the police vehicle and of uh, the army uh, vehicle with the two IC coming in over there. Now, uh, once these people entered from the flank, they could not go beyond a point. If the drills were not okay, then they would have reached the gun positions and can the I, ammunition point. Can, can, I, can I interrupt you, General Jaswal? Are you yes. therefore disagreeing with General Dillon, who said there was laxity, who said this was a lapse, who said that the army's attention had been deflected from security duties to election duties? Are you disagreeing with him? No, I am not completely disagreeing with him. I am trying to put across that there are certain secondary tasks which are on the increase, what General Dillon is saying, and that is at the cost of the primary task. But within the camp, I think I disagree that there was laxity because these people came in through a, a particular point. Okay. And once they entered, they were decimated there itself after they hit that barrack which caught fire and four people were killed in that. Let me bring now, you in at that point, Colonel Shukla. We have a very interesting spread of opinions. General Dillon has said that this incident at Uri where a total of eight soldiers and an army officer got killed was a lapse on the part of the army. It's an example of laxity. He says that the army's attention or focus has been deflected from key security duties to other secondary tasks. General Jaswal partly agrees, but he says nonetheless, the fact that the terrorists were stopped as they entered the camp proves that the system works. Now, I want to put a slightly different question to you. The Uri camp is some 14 miles from the border it must surely have several layers of security surrounding it. In fact, as is the army's practice, the army would want to dominate the area surrounding the camp. If therefore six terrorists could actually get through, does that not actually prove General Dillon's point that this was laxity, perhaps even something worse, this was negligence? Otherwise, how did they get through those layers of security? How did they get through an area the army wishes to dominate? Uh, Karan, anybody who says that six terrorists can enter an army camp, a full-fledged army camp along with a gun position, kill eight soldiers uh, and then eventually get gunned down, uh, and it is not an operational laxity, is I think being very kind to the army. Uh, most of the local commanders, most of the higher commanders in Kashmir are absolutely unanimous that this was operational laxity. This was operational laxity, not just at, at the LOC, not just at all the multiple surveillance layers, but I mean, those can be defeated by a very determined bunch of infiltrators. But what cannot be condoned is the entrance into an army camp that is guarded by sentries and that, you know, has multiple layers of security of its own. Now, what General Jaswal seems to be saying is that if there is no laxity and that he's saying that it was only because it was a very well-planned operation by the terrorists, then that means that any well-planned operation by terrorists should be able to breach any army camp. But we know that that's not the case. I'm sure that there is understanding at the local level and I'm aware of uh, deep disquiet over there. This was operational laxity. This cannot be condoned in the, in the, in the valley where an incident like this can take place any time. General Hasnan, you too, like General Dillon, have commanded 15th Corps in Sirinagar. Let me put this to you. Given that we are in the middle of an election campaign, and secondly, given that there's been an unprecedented turnout, shouldn't the army have actually anticipated such attacks? In the article you wrote for the Economic Times on Saturday, you said Uri was not on top of the army's countermeasures. Was that a mistake on the part of the army not to have realized that this could happen at Uri, that Uri was a soft spot? 
Thank you for that, sir. Karan, let me say unequivocally, I don't agree with anything which is being said on this show so far. It was not the fault of the army. Let me put it a little differently. Let's go back to 1999. The 6th of July, 1999. Till the 13th of January, 2000, there must have been not less than 10 to 12 Fidayeen attacks all over the valley. Why did they take place that time? Simply because in this kind of a conflict, the initiative is invariably with your adversary, with the, with the terrorists, with the, the militants. And the army, after taking the initial, you know, the initial attack, the initial brunt, then responds and ensures okay. that it gets the things done correctly. Now, I have not only commanded 15 corps, I have commanded 12 brigade at Uri. I've commanded 19 Div at Baramula. I know this ground backwards. I must have walked over this area 30 times. I know that any time a thing happens in Nogam, in Tutmari Gali, something will happen a few days later in the area of Uri. Okay, let me... What that will be, even I cannot predict. Let me, let me stop and you there. Knowing, no, no, Karan, knowing the ground, knowing the climatic conditions, knowing the state of the LC fence at this time, to anticipate where it will happen is very difficult. Let and me, let particularly you got an election General coming Sir, up. Let me stop you there. I want to bring in General Dillon because you're sharply not just disagreeing with General Dillon, you're actually criticizing his point of view. Now, General Dillon, Colonel Shukla completely agreed with you. He went even stronger in language than you did. He believes this was laxity, this was a lapse. General Hastain completely disagrees with you. And General Jaswal half agrees, half doesn't. How do you respond to General Hasnan, who's not only disagreeing, but virtually criticizing you for calling this laxity, for calling this a lapse on the part of the army? How do you defend your viewpoint? Well, it is his view. But fact is that the army camp has been entered. They inflicted damage. Only good thing was our reaction was very good, which I like to compliment the army that we killed all the six militants. Beyond that, whether it's difficult terrain or soft terrain, we are supposed to operate in that type of a terrain. If the militants are well trained, they are supposed to be well trained, well motivated to do the task, otherwise they wouldn't be there. So let's not make it that it was a difficult terrain, difficult to visualize. If you have been sitting there for years together, we should know every inch of ground. We should know from where river can be crossed, which are the vulnerable areas, and especially when the elections are there, there should be no doubt in our mind that things will happen and we should have appreciated all that. So I, I am sorry, I, I have a lot of respect for Snan, I know him personally, but I disagree with his approach that's the difficult terrain, you difficult can, to imagine. No, we can, must Can I put this well to you, General it. Hiller? General Hiller, if a lapse has happened, as you say, if there has been laxity, as you say, if the attention of the army has been deflected from the primary duty to secondary duties, who do you blame? Are you saying that the Northern Army commander of the day and the 15th Corps commander of the day are responsible? Or are you saying that the responsibility lies with politicians above them? Who is responsible for this? I would say nobody is responsible. It is the system which is there because the system has been concentrating only on elections. Everybody is looking into the valley at what percentage, 70%, 75%. But when it comes to 15 core or 19 dev, their main job is LC, prevent infiltration and ensure that our own installations are safe and then we go back to the elections. Okay. General Jaswal. Well, General that, Jaswal. Is the, that is our main task of the Indian Army is security. Absolutely. Against, Let me bring uh, in General uh, Jaswal. Aggression General from Jaswal, abroad. you took a middle position between General Hasnan and General Dhillon. Now you're hearing General Dillon say that the system itself is responsible. In other words, in other words, the system with which the army operates is itself responsible. And that is as worrying as pointing the finger of blame to any top senior commander. How do you respond to that? No, 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 I, I totally, I don't think any senior commander is to be blamed. You see, there are, for the primary task, there are, you know, there are layers. You defend the territorial integrity of the uh, country. And there are uh, tiers over there to defend the infiltration part of it, as also the territorial integrity. There are hinterland troops. They, carried out, they carry out operations in the rear. 
and at the time when some secondary task is to be prosecuted. But, no, but the point I'm asking is this, General Jaswal, is the yes. system to blame, as General Dillon says? Has no, the no, system no, failed? The system is to blame. I don't blame my uh, commanders or the politicians. This is a requirement where the army, the, the, the hinterland troops, okay. they have to perform the task to support the government so that conducive environment prevails for the conduct of uh, a democracy, I'll call. All right. So once again, you disagree with General Dillon. You don't believe the system has failed. Let me bring you in, Colonel Shukla, and let me now come to something you revealed in the Sunday Standard, sorry, the Business Standard on Sunday. You reported that a WhatsApp message suggests that junior officers in Kashmir are angry with the way the Northern Army commander and the 15th Corps commander have tied their hands with operational restrictions after the November 3rd incident at Anantanag when two Kashmiri boys were mistakenly killed. I'm going to quote from that WhatsApp message which you revealed first yesterday in your article. Soldiers on security duty on the army camp at Uri did not fire upon the approaching terrorist vehicle due to caution imposed on them after the Anantnag incident. Is this suggesting that in fact one of the reasons why there was laxity is because orders had been given after the Anantanag incident to be cautious and careful and that advice of caution and care has worked against the army? Well, Karan, let me start by saying that if they were upset at the, the sort of uh, pre-judgment that was done by the Northern Army commander about the culpability of those uh, nine army soldiers at the patrol, then they are going to be doubly angry at what the Prime Minister said in Kashmir today when he actually gloated and said that in the, under the BJP for the first time in 30 years the army was forced to apologize. Now that's not going to go down very well in the army. But to come straight down to your question, uh, even if the army commanders ask uh, patrols, checkpoints uh, and, and basically small teams in the hinterland to exercise caution, uh, that does not at all imply that a small check post on the line of control uh, which is vulnerable to infiltrating groups, uh, which has a small number of people, which is away from the highway where at a time at 3 a.m. in the morning when there's curfew and where every person is uh, expected to be hostile. For them to, to interpret that they were asked to exercise caution is, I think, pushing it a bit too far. It would be very difficult to justify this argument uh, given the circumstances in which that post was placed. I don't think anybody can, can legitimately complain that the senior officers forced us or held our hand. Okay. Let, let me come to you on that, General Dillon, before I go to General Hasnan. How do you respond to this WhatsApp message? This WhatsApp message is suggesting that, in fact, one of the reasons why the terrorist vehicle was not fired upon by the sentries at the gate at Uri is because, in fact, they'd been advised caution. Was that advice of caution from the Northern Army commander and the 15th Corps commander after the November 3rd incident properly no, given, I, I or was it like a mistake? How no, do you respond, General Dillon? General Dillon? General Dillon? General no, Dillon? General Dillon? That's to General Dillon. General uh, Dillon? I'll uh, first remember that at the higher level, we plan gave those instructions to the units and the subunits. The person who delivers on ground is a soldier, subunit and a unit. That is the, your whole strength. If they have ever a doubt that they are being asked to be cautious, then their initiative goes down and they become more cautious and I can't rule it out that the sentries at Uri having heard this incident which happened around Anantanag were a little more careful than otherwise. Otherwise, the orders to the sentries at every level are very clear. Follow the procedure. If somebody doesn't obey that procedure, take necessary General action. General Dillon, can I interrupt no, I you? Think... General Dillon, are you therefore yeah, saying, are you saying that the response of the sentries at Uri was conditioned by this earlier advice of caution? I, I'm not, I, I'm not sure, I'm not, I don't know what was their response, what they have said, but if but if 
it has affected their functioning and they were cautious, then we got to analyze it. So I'm not aware as to what have the sentries said. The best is the formation commander. They should tell us what have the sentries said. One other question. And One said, other question, General Dillard. Yes. Was the Northern Army commander and the 15th Corps commander mistaken in calling the November 3rd incident a mistake? In other words, did they make a mistake saying it was a mistake and apologizing for it? Uh, the first, as I, I'll repeat again what I said earlier, that at the highest level we plan issue instructions and those instructions have been such which are understood by the troops on ground. And if there is a genuine mistake and at this incident I call it unintentional incident, unfortunate incident, if it has taken place we got to understand that. In a difficult situation like insurgency, counterinsurgency operation, thus such things are bound to happen. If it was a deliberate action by the troops, definitely blame them. If it is not a deliberate operation, it was just a mistake, then I think we have to take action, talk about it accordingly. Okay. General Hasnayan, let me put this to you. The business standard says, specifically with reference to this incident in November, that soldiers and junior officers are torn between demands from senior officers to deliver results, i.e. kill militants, and at the same time uphold human rights. Is this an example where, perhaps under pressure from Mr. Modi and his government, the Northern Army Command and the 15th Corps Commander sent out a message of caution, thus sending the wrong message down the line, ending up in unnecessary caution and lack of action at Uri. Has this backfired on the army, as the article and the WhatsApp message suggests? Karan, you'll have to give me enough time to answer this. Because it's, you are coming to me for the second time in this entire discussion, and I have a fair amount to say. The first thing I want to tell you is that the legitimacy of this message itself is suspect. If you go on my Facebook page, there are not less than 70 or 80 comments in which me and Ajay Shukla have discussed this with various people. Let me, let me explain what I'm trying to say. The person who has initiated this message talks about a terrorist vehicle trying to enter this camp. There was no terrorist vehicle. This was a footborne infiltration which took place on the north bank of the Jhelum and the entry took place on the Jhelum bank on foot. So let's, the person who's initiated this has no idea. He's an unprofessional. He doesn't care about what the army is actually doing on ground. Let me condemn that unequivocally, first of all. The second thing is, I don't think the army commander's message had anything to do with don't open fire. The army commander was very, very clear. The corps commander, I think, was very clear. I would have done the same thing under the circumstances. I would have told my troops, I would have told my officers, Please exercise professional restraint. And that professional restraint, every officer in the army knows how to interpret. It does not mean that he will not fire. He's not gone on strike. Okay. He's not a part of a union. If something wrong has gone on in the hinterland, it doesn't mean that you are going to respond in this manner somewhere near the line of control. Okay. Professionalism means you understand and interpret the situation and fire according to that. So very quickly, General Sir. General Sir. Whoever is talking on the, on the said, WhatsApp has no idea of what the situation in the valley is. I want to very quickly understand what you're saying, but you need to give me a quick answer. You're therefore saying that the advice for caution was the correct advice? That there's no Absolutely, question. 100%. And you're also saying that there's no question of junior officers misinterpreting it and dropping their guard as a result. Should not be. Okay. If you are professionals, should not be. I would go to the extent of even saying that the originator of this message is probably not an Indian. Well, all right, maybe so. We don't know. Let's not speculate about that. General Jaswal, I want to now come very quickly to what Prime Minister Modi said today. He said that he personally had made the army accept that what happened in Anantanag in November was a mistake. He then added that never before has the army accepted this sort of mistake. And the clear implication was that the army has on several earlier occasions been involved in such mistakes or what others would call human rights violations. Only Mr. Modi has made the army own up and accept it's a mistake. Was that no, no, the I right and so. proper thing for the Prime Minister of India to say? 
And secondly, no, 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 what I, I, impact I will it have on the army in Jammu and Kashmir? No, 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 I don't think so. I totally agree with what Atta has said. I was saying the same thing. Someone is misquoting, no vehicle. No, no, just a moment. I'm not talking so about the WhatsApp. One, no, General Jaswal, General Jaswal, listen to my question. I'm not talking about I'm the talking WhatsApp. About I'm the talking Prime about Minister Prime now. Minister Modi. Please listen to my question, sir. I'm uh, repeating it for you. Prime Minister Modi today said that he personally had made the army accept it had made a mistake in Anantanag in November. He added that never before has the army accepted a mistake. The clear implication was that the army has made such errors, such mistakes, what others would call violations of human rights in the past, but never owned up to it. Mr. Modi has made them own up. And I want to ask you, was that the right thing for the Prime Minister of India to say in Srinagar? And secondly, what impact will it have on the soldiers and officers in Srinagar, in Kashmir? Uh, again, Karan, you're misquoting. There have been no human rights violations which have been hidden. What I'm the Prime Minister's sir. message is, his message is to highlight that he's emphasized on the transparency. If in case the inquiry felt that there was a gross mistake, there was no error of judgment, but there was an error of intention, then transparency demands that the army should apologize. He just emphasized on the transparency part of it. Right. Now, that doesn't go back to say that, well, all along we've been hiding. We never hit the Machil case. We, I was the one who ordered the court martial okay. part of it. The Atta was there. Karl Shukla, I'm you sorry, have a Shepard. very different interpretation there. of Prime Minister Modi from the one you gave me a moment ago. You said that junior officers would be upset by what Mr. Modi had said. You've heard General Jaswal just say that that's a misinterpretation, that Mr. Modi was only talking about the need for transparency. And if there had been an error at that level, the army apologizes for it. Do you want to go back and defend your claim that, in fact, Mr. Modi may well have offended junior officers with his message today? Uh, there, is, there is no uh, claim over here. I've already heard from the junior officers. Now, just to go back to General uh, Atta Hasnan's statement, uh, he took a factual point on that WhatsApp message to discredit the message and to suggest that it was actually originated by a Pakistani. Uh, let's start by assuming it was originated by a Pakistani. But the point, the, the, the main point that has to be noted is the speed at which it raced through the army networks and I was personally sent that message by at least 10 junior officers that I know and it obviously means that that message resonated with all of them and touched a chord. So while that lawyer argument about the fa one factual mistake would be very useful in a court of law, when we're talking about broad public perception, then General Atta Hasnan's uh, contention just doesn't stand. Okay. Uh, in terms of what the Prime Minister said today, in terms of what the Prime Minister said today, there is similar disquiet. They are saying that is why the senior commanders are getting up and criticizing and accepting blame where there is none. Because the Prime Minister himself is making them do it. So the sequence of events and the interconnectedness of what is happening is clear to all except for complete apologists of the army and apologists of Mr. Modi who say nothing is wrong, everything is fine, a terrorist team has come and killed eight army soldiers in a camp but everything is fine, no mistakes were made. How can we actually reason like this? Very quickly, General Hasnan, I'm going to give you 20 seconds for the last word. A very quick response. I can only say this that the army has, well, it's taken a beating as far as this incident is concerned. In this kind of a conflict, there is a good day, there's a bad day. This was a bad day for them. Two All days right. before that, it was a good day. And I'm sure tomorrow, when the turnout in the elections, I'm sure it will be proved that ultimately the army are the winners. That's all, all right. I have to say. We all hope ultimately the army are the winners. They are, after all, the Indian army and much beloved of us. But I still will end by reminding people what General Dillon has said. He's a former 15th Corps commander, just like you, General Hastan. And he says that what happened at Uri was an example of laxity. It was a lapse. It was a sign that the army's attention has been deflected from its core duty of security to a secondary duty of peaceful elections. And that's a point that Colonel Shukla strongly endorses. But equally, General Jaswal, former Northern Command Army commander, disagrees. And General Hasnan disagrees very strongly. This is an issue that will undoubtedly resonate with the army for a while. 
We need in our own interest to get to the bottom of it. We need to find out the truth. My thanks to all my four guests for joining me. Time for a break, but then...